welcome to this information session about the IS Essentials Ratings Tool. My name is Monique Isenheim and I'm Head of Market Development at the ISC. Before we kick off, I would just like to begin by acknowledging the traditional custodians of the land on which we meet today. We acknowledge their deep connection to land, water and culture and pay our respects to their elders past, present and emerging. And also Tina Koto Katoa to our attendees in New Zealand. So we've got a very diverse audience today with various levels of experience in IS ratings. And therefore we will be starting with a general overview of ISC and our ratings. And then next we'll cover IS essentials and the pilot that we are currently running. Um, we will be then moving to a more detailed look at the differences between existing IS ratings and IS essentials. We'll finish off with a Q&A, and so please type any questions in the Q&A box as they come up, and we will get to them later. All right, and with that, I would like to hand over to Patrick Hastings, our Chief Operating Officer, to talk to you about the ISC and ratings in general. Thanks, Monique, uh, and welcome everybody. It's wonderful to see so many people joining us to talk about a product we're so very excited about um, and really looking to make sure that we partner effectively with industry to make sure it's right and meeting the, the needs of industry. But as we move forward, <coughs> just a little bit about the Infrastructure Sustainability Council. So we're a membership-based not-for-profit organisation and peak body. We operate in both Australia and New Zealand and our purpose is ensuring, our, the purpose of our organization is ensuring that all infrastructure delivers social, cultural, environmental, and economic benefit. Our strategic goals um, are, are fourfold. The first one is, our, is leadership. Um, and this is really about ensuring that we are driving and working with our industry and government to drive global best practice in infrastructure. The second one is to ensure that we, we we are a thriving industry. We work collaboratively and connect our industry together to learn from each other, but also to grow sustainability practice and visibility within the industry. The next is market transformation. We work with our industry to advocate for change that supports the industry to rapidly transition. And then finally, organizational health, ensuring that we practice what we preach and that we are a purpose-led, inclusive and high-performing organization. <coughs> Pardon me. In terms of our membership, um, the ISC membership uh, is now well over 200 organisations across the entire uh, value chain of the infrastructure sector. So from proponents or asset owners through their designers and constructors, suppliers and partners, and also um, more recently financiers. As you'll see on this slide, it is broad ranging and we're across uh, all jurisdictions within uh, Australia. Um, and increasingly across uh, all of the jurisdictions of New Zealand. In terms of our products and services, or in terms of the way we, we, in which we support the IS, uh, the IS membership, but also the sector more broadly, um, first is about creating community. And we do that through events and conferences and awards recognizing practice. We also act as the <clears throat> repository or curators of knowledge. Um, and we, we support our industry through thought leadership, um, both yours and ours, uh, case management or project management um, and publications. Central to, uh, sorry, we, from, ad, from an advocacy perspective, we look to partner, partner, influence and drive leadership throughout the sector. And then in the capacity and capability space, we drive, we, we support by providing training, accreditation and professional development. Central to all of this is the IS rating scheme, <clears throat> which is the set of benchmarks that are used within, within industry or within the sector to, to measure their performance, okay, of their sustainability performance across all asset classes. So what are IS ratings or what is the IS rating scheme? The IS rating scheme <clears throat> is, is the overarching scheme itself that drives sustainability benchmarks. Sitting underneath the rating scheme are a multitude of rating tools, and I'll get to that in a minute. Right now, the IS rating scheme is deployed across Australia and New Zealand um, and is across a multitude of, of uh, asset classes. 
So as you'll see in the top right hand corner of, of this, this slide, um, <clears throat> we have, and actually I should point out that in South Australia, there are four, four projects and in Northern Territory, we recently welcomed our first project. But that gives you an idea of the number of projects that are currently being undertaken across Australia and New Zealand. In terms of what that actually means, we have $217 billion worth of assets currently under rating. And that equates to over 300 rating, ratings um, and over 200 projects. So a project of uh, high scale value might have a multitude of ratings underneath it. Um, and we'll get to a little bit more of that in, in due course. In terms of uh, what drives the rating practice, um, ultimately, currently, asset owners are requiring projects to undertake an IAS rating. It's an opportunity to demonstrate, <coughs> demonstrate and assure that the sustainability outcomes of that project are actually, in fact, uh, taking place and to drive behaviour and performance of our assets to ensure that we are, we are constantly striving for better. And if you think about the mantra, measure what matters, because what, what gets measured gets managed, that's really underpinning, um, underpinning the, the behaviours from, from an asset owner perspective. Finally, as we talk about the rating scheme, so as I said, the rating scheme sits over the top and underneath are a number of rating tools. So we have a planning rating tool, which looks at that planning phase of the life cycle of the asset. Um, and that's currently in pilot phase in WA and just, uh, just being reviewed to come out of pilot phase towards the end of the financial year 23. In terms of, we then have a design rating uh, and a construction rating or an as-built rating and an operations rating. We also have uh, sitting, sitting out there uh, an IS for international, but more importantly for today's conversation, we're talking about the IS essentials rating which is the design and as built or the design and construction phase um, of, of, uh, of the life cycle of the asset, but really looking at how we scale sustainability performance and assurance against sustainability performance for assets under 100 million. Within the rating scheme, regardless of which tool you undertake, it's a four stage process. You register an IS rating, you then undertake an assessment against the technical manual or the benchmarks, we then have third party verification of performance against those benchmarks. And then finally certification, which is the public recognition and celebration of the asset's performance um, and also the badging of the asset itself. To the right hand side of those arrows, you'll see the different levels that can be achieved uh, with it within the rating scheme. So starting from a 20 points to 40 points, a design rating of bronze, all the way up to 95 to 100 points, 110 points actually, uh, which is a design rating of diamond. So with that in mind, I might pass over to Kerry Griffiths to walk us through why an IS rating and what that actually means. Thank you for your time. Great, thanks Patrick. And um, kia ora tato to everybody out there. Great to see so many people joining us today. Um, I'm going to spend some time now talking about um, why IS ratings, and then I'll do an introduction to the IS Essentials tool um, to um, kick us off on that particular focus for today. So the IS ratings, why are they important? Really, the IS ratings provide a framework to drive performance um, across all aspects of sustainability across the quadruple bottom line, and also are aligned, as you can see at the bottom of the screen, with the UN Sustainable Development Goals. So what we see here are the four categories and the range of credits that are included in our rating framework to drive better performance. If we move to the next slide. Um, you know, one of the things that uh, the IS rating tool does is really target in on driving strong performance in a variety of areas. And one of those which is um, on all of our minds, I'm sure at the moment, is uh, better performance around climate action, reduction in greenhouse gas emissions, and also um, action and adaptation related to climate change. These are just some of the aspects that the rating focuses on. Um, in this area, 
as it does across a range of areas. But really addressing that greenhouse gas emissions that we know are related to infrastructure um, are significant and the rating tool provides a number of mechanisms to help drive those down. Moving on. Uh, and uh, this really illustrates how we do that at the, um, at the individual credit level. Our rating scheme is not about compliance. Our rating scheme, the IS rating scheme, is about driving performance beyond compliance. And we do that at, um, in each of the areas that were on the earlier slide at different levels. Um, at a kind of entry level, but even then we're still beyond the compliance perspective and really driving through to best practice, uh, looking at restoration and enhancement. That's the model that we use for every credit within the rating scheme, and that applies um, to our existing ratings and will also apply to IS essentials. And, and then collectively, um, across all of those um, using the rating scheme, driving for the different levels of performance benchmarks, we um, on individual projects are able to measure our impact and, and are rewarded and um, those are highlighted and celebrated as Pat said earlier um, at an individual project level. But we also really, um, our, our vision and the vision of our community is to drive impact across our sector and across industry. So on an annual basis, we pull together um, and bring together an impacts report that highlights the value that is created across all IS ratings, as demonstrated here. Some years ago in 2019, um, the ISC commissioned a report looking at the return on investment of the IS rating. Um, and here you've got some um, of the outputs of that report. Um, what we know is that the study that was undertaken showed that a minimum ROI um, of um, $1.6 uh, is returned for every dollar that was spent. And over a 20 year period, the the report showed that that could be as high as $2.4 for every dollar spent. And this is just looking at, this was just looking at the areas where we can um, quantifiably, quantifiably um, measure the outcomes. On top of those outcomes that are demonstrated here are also some additional benefits and really important benefits from a sustainability point of view um, that aren't quantified but we know exist and we continue to drive um, opportunities to look at how we measure those even better. Um, but some of the human capital development, the health outcomes, benefits of open space, et cetera, um, are on top of that um, 1.6 or $2.4. And then also um, we talked about our ratings at an individual level about driving performance across industry um, we also um, connect the outputs from the ratings uh, with a number of um, partners, so many of whom are, will be on this call today, I'm sure, um, who help us to demonstrate how the IS ratings can achieve national and local sustainability strategies. We've released two recent reports that reflect on that. Um, one is the Advancing Our Nations, uh, which is about thriving nations looking at the role of infrastructure and in resilience building and driving positive impact. And then also the place-based approaches to net zero. And, and both of those reports are examples and case studies of IS ratings um, and demonstrating how the activities driven through the rating and delivered by projects really goes to help deliver on those national and local strategies. So collectively, in summary then, um, the IS rating tools um, are part of a, are a scheme, deliver a scheme, they're part of a scheme, as Patrick said, that drives sustainability outcomes. They deliver systematic and it's a systematic and re recognized approach. So a common framework that's used across um, all of the phases of infrastructure and now excitedly into um, specifically smaller projects, which we'll talk about next. There's a strong focus on whole of life efficiencies and outcomes. The scheme 
benchmarks performance and continues to develop to benchmark performance so through a continuous improvement process. It also um, assists uh, individual projects, organisations and the industry collectively to manage reputational risk and gain recognition for the outcomes that are delivered. And that can be measured by financial return on investment as demonstrated and also um, the direct and indirect impacts both at the project level uh, but also more importantly um, at the um, community level, at the city level, at the national level and across our industry. So now I'd love to introduce you to the IS Essentials tool. The IS Essentials tool is a new ISC tool that delivers these benefits um, and um, supports the delivery of those um, impacts in the smaller pro for smaller projects, smaller infrastructure projects. And it's specifically designed for projects that are less than 100 million. And we are currently in a pilot phase, which we'll talk about um, very shortly. So it's suitable for a wide range of infrastructure types, um, particularly with a particular focus on local government projects. And it's really exciting for us to be working now um, with new um, infrastructure owners and operators who have been keen for some time to um, use an IS rating, um, but perhaps the schemes that the tools that we have currently um, were focused on projects that were um, a bit larger. And so now we're developing a tool that's going to be able to uh, respond to the desire of um, these uh, local government organisations and others as some of our many existing uh, members who also um, design, construct and operate smaller projects and assets. And the IS rating and the IS Essentials tool um, is designed um, using the recently published uh, last year um, updated design and as built technical manual so that we're um, developing a tool that is really at the leading edge of um, best practice performance. Um, so, and is really um, driving that and rewarding best practice performance, but has been reduced in complexity and scale to suit smaller projects. And again, um, through the pilot process, and um, Tom and Ty are going to talk about that, uh, we're really testing um, how well that is working currently and what are the ongoing improvements that we're going to make before the final tool is published. IS Essentials, when it um, is released um, generally to the market, will be our first digital rating. So again, a very exciting development for the ISC. Um, we are uh, on a journey around digitalization. We're doing some work at the moment with our materials calculator, um, which some of you will be aware of. And we're really excited to um, move in the direction of digitalizing our rating tools and IS Essential being the first to do that. Um, and as is highlighted here, um, we are currently accepting pilot projects. We have a number of pilot projects that are already participating in the development of the scheme. This is an exciting um, opportunity really to, um, for us to be working directly with our um, delivery teams, with the proponents, um, with new um, organisations who are wanting to use a small projects rating tool um, to help in the development and finalisation of this tool. So we'll learn from how those projects are, um, their experience with the tool, the feedback that we get, and we'll be making changes and finalising the tool. Um, as Patrick says, we're keen always and part of our commitment to work with industry to deliver tools that will meet industry's needs and drive sustainability outcomes. So on that note, let me um, hand over to um, Tom Young. And Tom is our state lead in New Zealand, or our lead in New Zealand, should I say, um, and also a senior project manager. And he's been heavily involved in the delivery of the pilot um, process, working with pilot projects currently, and he's going to talk to us about that now. Thanks, Tom. Thanks very much, Kerry. Uh, kia ora, everyone. Um, so like Kerry said, we we have a number of pilot projects which are currently testing uh, the essential tool for us. So we kicked that off last year. 
We now have 16 projects confirmed. 11 of those have already started and are, are testing the tool with another five to, to kick off within the coming months. We're also speaking with a, a great range and a number of other projects who are, who are interested in testing the pilot. Now, the, the, the great thing so far we've found is that we have projects across the whole of Australia and New Zealand. We also have projects which cover the capital bands, and you'll hear a little bit more about the capital bands on IS Essentials in, in a moment from Ty. Um, but essential that we've, we've um, getting a nice variety, a nice range of projects. So we've got them across Australia and New Zealand, across those capital bands, and across really very different asset types. So you can see a few examples on the on the um, page there. But we, we've got boardwalks, we've got public swimming pool. We also have, I suppose, our traditional some roading projects. We also have some marine beacons up north. So a real good variety of projects, and and that diversity is really enabling us to test the tool in different ways. And so critically, we're we're getting feedback from all these pilot projects to find out how the tool is working for them. And we'll use that feedback to iterate the tool, uh, to mold it and to shape it, to, to really develop a, an improved tool as we go through. Um, the other interesting thing is, I suppose, like Kerry touched on, is that we're seeing asset classes here, which maybe traditionally haven't been exposed to IS essential, sorry, an IS rating. And so we recognize that and we'll be working with those projects as well. The process which we go through for an IS Essentials and for the pilot is, is similar to a full rating. So for those, those of you who are aware of a full rating, it's very similar to that with a couple of adaptations. And I'll just quickly run through those for you. So the initial project assessment, um, that, that's pretty key with IS Essentials. Like I spoke about, we're getting a lot of proponents and organizations and maybe on projects that haven't maybe been exposed to an IS rating before. So that initial project assessment is really an opportunity to, to contact us, have a chat through, find out if essentials are appropriate for you or not. Um, and we can talk you through a little bit more in the process on there. The rating agreement, very, very similar to what we'd be carrying out for a full rating. And then a materiality assessment. Again, you'll hear a little bit more about that shortly, but the materiality assessment is, is really very key within IS Essentials Pilot because it screens in and out credits. And I won't go into the details of that now. You can look forward to that through Ty, um, but it's a really key step in, in the pilot. The assessment submission. So you still need an ISAP. So it follows a very similar process to a full rating. An ISAP will pull the information together and submit through to us. However, ever, we, we recognize that this is a pilot um, and we at ISC are very keen to support you throughout this pilot. And so you'll, you'll as you would with a full rating, have the the IS project manager working with you. And that our project managers in, in this instance will, will work with you to look at the feedback that you're providing as well. A couple of slight dif differences here. Um, with a full rating, we have a TC and CIR approach. We've got a slightly different, maybe a slightly more nimble approach for IS essentials. Again, to reflect the fact that this is the first time it, um, a lot of projects have been exposed to this. The verification process, uh, very similar to a full rating. It goes through two rounds. Probably the only difference being that we, we're going with one verifier for it. And then certification, that follows the, um, the language in the 2.1 certification. However, there's recognition that the, the, the certification will be a, a pilot certification. But we will be there to try and promote uh, and encourage the, the stories around the, the, the pilots. You know, we're really keen to, to demonstrate the learning that's happened and demonstrate how the tool has evolved as a result of these pilots. So critically, it's all about feedback. Um, you'll hear us labor the point quite a lot, but it really is without your feedback and without the pilots, um, the, the essentials tool won't become what I think what we need it to become. So how to get involved? Well, it's, it's pretty straightforward, get in touch with us. And I would say any, any projects at all, if anyone's got a glimmer of interest if you've got any projects under 100 million, please get in touch with us. And uh, you, you'll have our details on the back of this this work work up here. Um, particularly, it'd be really interesting to, to hear from all projects, but but projects which are within a program of works, we're, we're looking at that. And again, you'll hear a little bit more from Ty on on how our program will work and the efficiencies that, that could be gained through it. So please get in touch with us on that. Participation, as you can see, included there, like I touched on certification. We also, through recognition that this is a pilot, we're going to be offering some training to projects that sign up. Um, and there's maybe a little bit more hand holding through the process from your um, 
there's project managers and I'm with my full loop, and, but you will have our, our dedicated support on that. The communication, like I said, we're, we're wanting to promote this, we want to promote the third district, we're undertaking this, recognizing that, that the trialing, trialing the pilot um, will be promoting and carrying out some case studies. Uh, we're also looking at um, possible membership reduction fees as a result of signing up for these pilot projects. The requirement from, from your side, well, there's a, an upfront um, participation fee that covers both the design and as built phases. So it covers all your ISC admin costs around that. It also covers your verification for the design and as built phases. As with a full rating, you'd require your resources to actually carry out the assessment. So that needs to be considered by yourselves whether it's an internal or external resource, that's always part of the rating process. Um, so, yep, like I say, just to reiterate again, any interest, please get in touch with us. And I'll now pass on to my colleague, Ty Monberg, who is going to be going into a little bit more detail and the nitty gritty of the essential tools. Ty, and to you. Thanks very much, Tom. Uh, welcome, everyone. For those that don't know me, my name is Ty Momberg and I'm the Principal Technical Advisor with the technical team. Um, as you can see from the next slide, there are about 10 developments or approaches that we are working on to reduce the scale and complexity of the Essentials Rating Tool. Uh, we have already done a lot of work and thinking around some of these and others are still quite in the early stages of development. So for example, uh, we have clear pathways on initiatives like reductions in credits and criteria from the 2.1 design as well manual. Uh, we have quite clear pathways in terms of the updated materiality assessment and the new approach to base case, while others still require further development and thinking. Um, and some of these that still require this further thinking are things like the organizational program approach, templates, examples, i.e. which credits really need these the most and, and what format will they be in? And also the digitalization of the tool that still requires quite a lot uh, more thinking and work. The idea for today's session is not to go through the details of all of these, but rather I'm gonna talk broadly about four of them um, to provide you with a sense of what the new tool entails. The first approach slash development that um, I'll be providing an overview on is item two in that previous list. This is the credit criteria, deletions and modifications. So the items red boxed in the above slide, hopefully very clearly communicate what this development is all about i.e. it's the review, it was the review of every single credit criteria, and then the deletion or modification of specific criteria or parts of criteria to make them more relevant and applicable to small projects in terms of scale and complexity. So in this specific example on the slide for credit LEA1, you can see in level two, there's been some words crossed out under DL 2.2, that's regarding uh, public reporting that has been deleted from level two. And if you look closely, you can see that, that has been moved across to level three. And the previous or original level three, two requirements have both been deleted. Um, we think this is a bit more appropriate for smaller projects. Um, and hopefully that's clear in terms of what this, this kind of action and development is. And we've made well over a hundred of these types of changes through the process. This is the big one that Tom was talking about. So this is really one of the, the more major development approaches that we've been working on. Um, and it's, it's, it's bigger media development to really help reduce the scale and complexity of the rating tool for smaller projects. As you can see from the slide, uh, the materiality assessment is, is very linked to the project's capex bracket. Projects under 20 million, will only have 20 credits screened in. And what we mean by screened in is available to, to them. So that's the total number of credits available to them. Projects from 20 to 50 million will have 25 credits screened in and projects between 50 to 100 million will have 30 credits screened in. Uh, the points are redistributed once the screening process has been undertaken. 
as you can see, the intent is obviously that smaller projects do less, simple as that. Uh, it is important to note that there are no compulsory or mandatory credits in the essentials tool. This development and all others are being tested by pilot projects, as Tom was saying, to see if they work in the real world. Another development that we are working on is an update to the base case. This is item four on the list. This update has two main benefits. Uh, the first one is that it reduces the amount of modeling required by projects as it's more based on actual data. And secondly, it increases the accuracy of the base case as a result of using more actual data and less, than, and less modeling. How does the new approach work? Uh, I firstly just want to make take a quick step back as some of you might not be uh, really familiar with the previous approach. And I am simplifying it a bit, but basically the previous approach required projects to model a base case or business as usual construction footprint plus an operations footprint at the very early stages of the project to then be compared to actual footprints. As I'm sure most of you experienced, um, the assumptions and modeling undertaken at the very early stages of design really very rarely match the final product development in all aspects. So therefore, what we're doing with the new methodology is we're using a reverse calculation from the actual back to a more aligned and relevant base case business as usual. And this occurs both in design and as built stages. Uh, stages. I, you now start with the actual and work backwards towards a business as usual base case. So this is quite tricky to explain, and, but I think the image on the next slide should really clarify how this works. So here you can see on the left-hand side, you start with the actual, that is your starting point. Then the reverse calculation occurs, which is essentially adding all the project initiatives slash savings back onto the actual to calculate a more accurate and relevant base case, i.e. the actual is now the starting point, not modeling undertaken at the very early stages of the project. Obviously, all these initiatives savings that are added back need to be justified and evidenced, but we believe this is a more accurate method of calculation and also an easier process to follow. Again, as with all these developments and approaches, we are testing this with pilot projects and working groups as the essential tool develops. Next slide, thank you. Development item six on the list is organizational program approach. So this development is to recognize and enable that work undertaken as part of a program of works or at the organizational level may be used to meet credit criteria or parts of credit criteria within an IS submission and therefore recognize the efficiency of these scenarios. Uh, this particular development is still in the really early stages and requires a lot more further work and thinking. We are working with the pilot projects and also the Essentials Technical Working Group and the Essentials Industry Reference Group to develop a solution that can maximize efficiencies in the real world. Uh, next slide, please. Cool. As discussed above, many aspects of the Essentials tool are still in development. And we are working with pilot projects and working groups as we go. Uh, this involves a flexible, reiterative process of testing as we develop. This is to enable us to bring an appropriate tested tool to the market at the end of the process. Uh, the technical manual started as draft Rev3 around about mid-2021. Uh, and now we have recently brought draft three to the market for pilot testing and for the working groups to review and comment on. Draft three is based on feedback received and the in-depth analysis undertaken by the appointed technical consultant, LOSI Consulting, and a really massive shout out to them. Um, it's been a really, really in-depth investigation and, and piece of work and I've really enjoyed working with them. So a yeah, really big shout out to LOSI Consulting. Um, and as well as part of that process was the IEC's internal technical panel or ITP. As detailed in the slide, 
piloting projects will be at a minimum expected to undertake a rating, utilizing the IC Central's resources available to them at the time of kickoff, um, which is draft three at this point in time. I'll now hand back to Monique. Thank you. Thanks so much, Ty. Yeah, that also brings us to the end of our slides. We are hoping that this has been really useful and inspiring for you. And um, perhaps some of you have some projects in mind that you would like to suggest for the pilot project. If that's the case, please reach out to your ISC contact or to me directly, and we would be really happy to set up a chat about the project and see if it could fit with the pilot. And um, we're doing really well on time, so we have um, the opportunity to, to go through quite a few questions in the Q&As. If you haven't submitted your question, feel free to use the Q&A box. Um, if you have a look at this, we've answered some of the questions in writing, and I'll pick up a few of the questions for live answering now as well. Um, the first question... Um, which I'd like to pass on to Patrick is um, from Vanessa. Can you expand further on what is meant by first digital rating? Sorry, just having a little bit of trouble with uh, the IT there. Um, yes, I can. So ultimately, Vanessa, what we're undertaking is, uh, is a, uh, the, the transformation of our technical manual and our processes into a digital platform so that you as a project will be able to interface with uh, the ISC processes and the ISC um, technical manuals in a far less, um, uh, what we say, archaic uh, manner. So uh, at the moment, and we're still scoping this up and we're scoping this up with pilot projects um, as we go, um, <clears throat> there will be a, it'll be a submission platform Plus a range of tools that sit over the top in terms of supporting you through the process. Uh, and I believe also uh, to Ty's earlier dot point, we'll also be looking at making sure there is a community of practice as well as the opportunity to uh, engage with tools and templates. Thank you, Patrick. Uh, Next one is probably one for Tom. Um, would you be able to nominate which infrastructure in New Zealand are using I the IS scheme at the moment? Yeah, thanks, Monique. Um, I'll put in the chat a link to our IS ratings directory where you can see all the projects which have already been verified uh, under the IS rating. But as you saw in Pat's, Patrick's slide earlier on, any of the Wakapotahi projects, uh, over 15 million need to consider an IS rating and over 100 million are mandatory and obliged to, to do that. You'll also see that the central rail link projects are undertaking uh, an IS rating. Um, and within IS Essentials, we do have projects which maybe we'll, we'll peck internally as to whether we're going to be sharing the names of those IS Essentials projects, the pilot projects wider for the time being. Thank you. Our next question is from Zoe. Will feedback from pilot participants be shared to indicate how this informs the final tool? Patrick? I'm really struggling with the mute button there. Uh, at least I didn't start talking to myself. Uh, so the, the short answer is uh, yes, we will be providing visibility over the feedback that we receive. Uh, what tends to happen is that we provide a summation, um, a summation of the feedback rather than individual feedback. As you can imagine, as we go through this, um, and if I reflect on version 2.1, um, that was over 1600 pieces of, of feedback so uh, what we do, what we tend to do is provide thematic um, and structured summation of that feedback and we do make that public. Thank you. Uh, we've got quite a few new questions here, so I'll just pick a few more. Is there any guidance around what scores are required for the various rating levels under IS Essentials, for example, silver points, gold points, et cetera? And maybe Ty, that's one for you or Tom. Yeah, sure. Um, well, the, the kind of the scoring levels are exactly the same as the other tools. Um, the only kind of amendment to recognize that this is pilot is that projects, all projects will get a 
um, a certificate and a score, even those scoring um, less than, I think it's 25 or 30 points, please correct me on the points there, Tom. Um, but all projects that participate, pilot projects that participate will receive a certificate and an award. Just add that, Ty, the, the award levels, the language around the award levels follows the language in the 2.1 um, certification levels, so platinum, gold, silver, and bronze. Yeah. And I guess maybe um, worth also noting that um, even though there may be reduced focus or a focus on fewer credits, the scoring is still out of the 100 or 110. Excellent. We've got a question from Grant. When mentioning ratings in relation to programs of work, should we interpret that a program can receive a rating, but that it would be assessed using typical project from within that program, that typical project? So pro question about how we um, do program ratings. Tom, is that a good one for you? I can, I can try. <laughs> um, I suppose the, um, the the main takeaway at the moment is we're still we're still testing that, so we're still testing how our program will work for for our IS pilot, and and that's why we sort of raised a few times. If anyone's got any, please please come forward because we would love to test it during the pilot process. Um, I know Ty, I don't know if you want to touch on one of the elements that we're looking at is how a program and organisational approach can be used within the IS essentials pilot. Um, I don't know if you want to mention anything on, on that side. Yeah, thanks. So at this point, what we've done in draft three of the technical manual is we've kind of, I like to call it signposts. So we've tried to identify a number of credits where if you are part um, of a program or if there is a broader um, organization, we've tried to identify which credits could really lean into that approach. Um, and now what we're doing is part of a separate piece, or sorry, it's connected, but with the Essentials Technical Working Group, we're going to have that as one of the work plan items to really investigate the actual process of how it would work in real life. And we also, as Tom was saying, asking for pilot projects who might be in that situation to please come forward and, and kind of help us work through the process as we develop it. Excellent. A question from Emily, for smaller projects, is there an option to combine design and SBIRC submissions in one submission? You can have a start with that if you like. Um, thanks, Emily. Yeah, the, so again, it's probably worth just coming and having a, having a conversation with us. We recognize within the pilot, and particularly for these smaller projects, that the way that contracts are set up and the timing for them may be slightly different from a full rating. So we're, we're trying to be flexible on that. Um, and hence why the approach that we, we're taking is one of trying to be nimble, trying to be flexible. And so yeah, if there's projects like that, please come forward. Um, we, we're working through, I think we touched on it earlier on, this pilot pathway approach that we're taking, which allows projects to, to propose maybe slight, slightly different tracks um, while still following the, the, the objectives and the, the intent of and of the technical manual of the tool. Thanks, Tom. A question from Rick. Um, the approach infers that there are fewer material sustainability issues for smaller projects. How has that been justified? Let me, um, I'll pick that up, Monique. Um, we, I guess, let me go through that process again because it's not our intention um, to have that outcome but that we um, undertake the materiality assessment is undertaken against all of the credits in all categories within the scheme um, with the project. And then the uh, reduced number of credits to focus on are um, based on um, focusing on the high materiality, medium to high materiality um, areas. Those are the ones that are um, prioritized and the low materiality ones are then reduced and that's um, depending on uh, the band, uh, the capital band, um, that may be more or less. And the rationale for that really at our end is to, um, if we reduce the number of credits available for a project to focus on, um, that will um, put their attention on those most material issues. 
So they start off with all of the credits um, and the reduction in the number of credits is um, undertaken following a materiality assessment with the project. So hopefully that um, gives you a bit of an insight into it. It's our current um, proposed approach. It seems to be working well, but clearly going through the pilot project that allows us to learn as we go and um, to make adjustments um, on the basis of kind of experience and feedback. And also, um, as you highlight, Rick, uh, we're not uh, looking to um, take away any focus from the material issues um, across the quadruple bottom line for the project. Cheers. Great. And another question on materiality. Um, will the IS Essential Scorecard materiality assessment matrix be released? I can pick that up, Monique. Yeah, um, we have, we're releasing it uh, onto the pilot projects at the moment. So, yep, yeah, it goes out and we, we've updated the materiality and the scorecard um, for the relevant draft of the Essentials Manual. So any project which signs up will, will use the Essentials Scorecard. Um, again, anyone got any questions about that, please get in touch and we can have an initial chat through. Thanks, Tom. Um, a question from Sonia, um, is this saying that backcasting or re reverse calculated approach is the only accepted method for IS essentials, whereas the full design and ESPO uh, rating still accepts both methodologies? Uh, I, I can have a go at this one. So that is definitely what the aquifer approach, that it would be the way to do it for essentials, whereas if you are designed as but it would be an option, um, but it would be the the, the approach for essentials, yes. Just to add to that, Ty, um, we do, if, if a project came to us, I think, I hope I'm not speaking out turn here, but if a project came to us and they did want to use the traditional, for want of a better word, approach, I, I think we'd, we'd probably allow that, well, we would allow that through essentials, we'd, we'd utilise our pilot pathway to, uh, to allow that. So don't see it as a barrier to, to an essentials project, I think. Sure. Thank you. A question from Rob. Hi, can you tell me if eTool can be used for the materials credit as for the RSL 6 credit and whether a credit interpretation request would be needed for that? Um, I think the short answer is yes and no, as in it, it's, it's in line with version 2.1 and the, um, kind of 1.2. It's already a pathway allowed and as eTool have been kind of officially recognized no, no need for credit interpretation request. Probably just to build on that, there is an evidence requirement around, just want to talk quickly to the evidence requirement around the utilization of the e-tool. E so you do need the, the report. Sorry, yes, that is, that is correct. There are specific requirements as with all the credits, ev specific evidence is needed for everything. Um, and there is a, a kind of a document and alignment report that details the specific evidence requirements detailed as part of that approach. Thanks, Matt. Good call out. A question from Abhijit. Can you please describe if and how the verification process has changed? The verification process is effectively the same as a full rating except there is only a single verifier for the, uh, the, the, the final. Aside from that, you still have two rounds of verification, so you still fill the mission together and submit and have the opportunity to, uh, to respond to the round one comments and the date accordingly. And then the round two is the one in which they give you your final score. Maybe just worth um, commenting that that's the approach that we're taking in the pilot. It's kind of um, one of the things that we're wanting to test and to streamline. And we're you know, conscious of the fact that um, you know, we'll have a, a larger number of smaller projects coming in and that the verification process needs to um, be an efficient way of doing it. So that's likely to um, evolve even further uh, as we move through the pilot and come out to full release of the IS Essentials tool. Yeah. <clears throat> Thanks, Kerry. It's a really good, really good call out. And I think the, the other part of that is if you are, as you go through the pilot process, if you are seeing opportunities or you've been through several verifications, 
really would welcome uh, welcome your headspace uh, if you've got particular ideas. Um, you know, I think we do need to we will need to evolve it. So where you see opportunity, always welcome to always welcome to send that through. We'd, we'd welcome it with open arms. Uh, an interesting question from Grace: Is IS Essentials open for international pilot pilot projects? I think that must be you, Minnie. <laughs> <laughs> we we haven't got any inter uh, international projects, but we'd certainly welcome a conversation. If you've got anything in mind, Grace, please reach out, and um, we'd love to hear more about it. Um. Michael, um, the participation fee will limit projects that come could come out of LG. I think LG is probably local government. Is the idea that the dedicated PM runs through the project? If so, how do we build corporate knowledge and experience in this area? It's a good question. Tom, would you like to speak to the process um, and the roles and responsibilities within, within delivering a rating? Yeah, thanks, Pat. So in terms of delivering the rating, it, it will be through your ISAP. So you need an accredited professional who pulls up, who pulls the submission together. Now, um, the the support that we're providing from, from the ISC is going to be similar, but like I said earlier on, maybe a touch more hand-holding, if you like, recognising that this is a pilot. Um, but essentially, you do need an ISAP who's going to be pulling it together. I think just building on that, we do have um, obviously some training, some training available to to all organisations, both to to build out your accredited professional, but also to support your organisational uh, journey more broadly. Um, and then we are building out several more courses at the moment that will help assist with that with that transition for your organisation. It's a really good question. The intent behind IS Essentials or behind the rating scheme more broadly is not just to assure outcomes on a project, but to support that culture of change towards more sustainable outcomes. So it really is important that uh, when you undertake a rating or when you engage with the rating scheme, you are looking and we are supporting that organizational shift more broadly. And that speaks very much to that uh, strategic goal I talked about earlier, which is thriving industry. I was just thinking maybe for people who aren't as familiar with the IS ratings, Tom, could you just say a little bit more about what uh, we mean when we say ISAP? Sure, thanks, Monique. Yeah, so an ISAP is an accredited and uh, infrastructure sustainability accredited professional, um, and that is achieved through a training course which is run by the Infrastructure Sustainability Council. Um, if you want to get in touch with us, we can run into the details of that. Um, but it's a uh, Correct me if I'm wrong, guys, but I think uh, four sessions of around three or four hours each with an exam at the end, and that becomes your certification for, for that position. Yeah, and where, where there is no ISAP in an organization, um, that training for one person is included in the pilot fee as well. Um, a question on ISAPs as well. Is the Essentials um, Technical Manual available to ISAPs? Yes, it, it is available to ISAP. It will be available to ISAPs at the moment. It's available to ISAPs that are either un, uh, undertaking a pilot project or those we're engaging with around undertaking a pilot project. The reason we've done that is because the, the manual is iterating still. Uh, what we didn't want to end up with was with 17 different iterations um, out in the marketplace. So if you are if you are really intrigued or you would like to talk about undertaking a pilot project. We're more than happy to make the current version available to you and walk through it with you. Um, and we will make the entire manual um, available once we get a bit closer to the, the final product. So we really do, do need more feedback from pilot projects to ensure that the, the manual itself is, is clean cut. That probably also answers in part the question from Abhijit. Can you please provide how the credits are different from 2.1? Will there be a summary available? So uh, I can start talking to this. I think there, again, there will be like Tom, uh, sorry, Pat was alluding to before, there would be kind of a breakdown of the major changes, but again, it would be at the end, not at this point, because we're still in the middle of the process. Okay. 
right. Um, just seeing what we have. Um, when will the, will the digital tool be available? Patrick, that's one for you. Yep, no problem. So we we have started. Um, so as a lot, as some of you will be aware, we started with the digital materials calculator, which we're trying to do sort of the, the back end of that development. Um, and we've started working with our provider, same provider as the materials calculator, to to start the scoping work um, to develop up the uh, ice essentials. I don't have a fully clear time frame yet. Um, but it will be within my understanding at this point is it will be within 12 months. Um, but there is still a fair bit of scoping to do to firm up that, that time frame. And that question fits as well um, with Grace's question on how long do you anticipate required um, for the pilot testing stage? So how long is the pilot testing stage? Yeah, I'll, I'll take this one as well. Um, everyone's taking a back step. Everyone's a bit, bit, bit gassed out. Uh, <clears throat> so the, the pilot phase uh, is intended to, intended to come to conclusion in terms of registrations, no later than the, in, uh, December 23. Um, if we get enough pilots onboarded early enough and we sort of have a, a number in mind in terms of how many we think we need to have a reasonable volume uh, through the through the process to, to fully understand it, um, then that could be earlier. And then we anticipate most projects will run between 12 and 18 months. So we will probably bring the, depending on the volume of projects, uh, the, the IS Essentials may be, may be available to the market as early as January 24, um, or could be as late as June 24. Uh, really depends on the pilot projects and volume. And I think we've got time for one more question. Um, I go with the one from Emily. Will the digitization include any tools to streamline and simplify the process as well as make this more accessible for the broader industry? I think we've touched on that. Yeah, uh, and Emily, it's lovely to hear from you. Uh, the 480% yes. Uh, that, that, is the, that is the full intent of digitalization we are we are reviewing all of the processes um, as well as looking at ways that we can we can streamline it and we have done some industry engagement to date around some of those barriers and opportunities um, and we will continue to do further engagement to make sure that we're getting that right and I guess maybe worthwhile adding to that that you know we might have a um, initial version and there'll be ongoing improvement kind of in that area Maybe one sneaking one more in from Claire. How is the training of ISE verifiers coming along? I know that's a quick one. Me? Tom, do you want to go? Yeah, yeah. It's I mean it's coming along. It is we have identified verifiers who will be undertaking the verification for the pilots or for the first couple of drafts of the pilots. So yeah, we're working with them to to get them up to speed, or we will be working with them to get them up to speed on the on the technical manual. Now, I suppose bearing in mind that. The verification will be along the similar, it will follow the similar intent of the full rating, whereby they refer the submission and the evidence against the technical manual. However, recognizing that the evidence required in the credit criteria will be as per the manual with when the pilot projects are working. Uh, and depending on when the projects are registered, they'll be working possibly on, on different iterations of the manual. So the verification training is getting there. Great. Excellent. Thank you, everyone, for your really good questions. Um, there were a few questions about um, sharing the presentation in the slides. Yes, the recording will be made available, so watch out for that. As we conclude, we would be super grateful if you take two minutes to fill in the survey that will pop up after the Zoom. That will give us some really good insight on how we can make those sessions really interesting and engaging for you. And yes, as otherwise, as said, if you're interested in discussing a specific project that might be suitable for the pilot, please reach out. We'd be really happy to talk to you about it. All right. That concludes our webinar. And thanks so much for um, your participation and to the panel. And we shall speak later. See you. Thanks, everybody.